So here's a quick video to uh, help my neighbors in Botany Woods recognize the four most commonly encountered snake species. Hopefully this will allay some fears and prevent the killing of harmless and beneficial species and uh, make everybody a little bit um, feel a little bit safer and a little bit uh, more um, confident as they work in their yards and putter around the neighborhood. The smallest and probably the most abundant snake species in the neighborhood that's commonly seen anyway is the brown snake. It's a terrible name, but that's the proper common name. Uh, decays brown snake or sometimes referred to as the city snake because it's very at home in urban settings. Um, these guys are really tiny. They're a water snake relative. They're totally harmless. Uh, they don't even try to bite if you pick them up. Um, things to notice as far as identification, notice that the top of the head usually has a darker, like a rounded spot on the top of the head, and there's often these little um, darker bars on the neck and on the side of the head. And then along the body, notice almost a checkerboard-like pattern in some individuals. Uh, other individuals, you just see a row of spots. But in any event, a tremendously large number of tiny little darker spots sometimes with little cross bands, uh, sometimes double rows, sort of like a checkerboard. Um, but that's, um, that's decay snake. You often find these when you're raking leaves and moving leaf litter around, that's what they do. These guys eat slugs. So if you have a garden, you definitely want these around. Um, like I said, they're small. This is a, a, a very large adult. They get rarely very much larger than this. This one shows sort of a spotted pattern more than a checkerboard pattern. So there's a lot of variation in the coloration. Um, but in any event, you're going to see um, a tiny, tiny rows of spots down the side of the body and notice that the head is darker than generally the rest of the body. The largest of the common um, harmless snakes is the black rat snake or gray rat snake is actually the technical term now. They've rearranged the names a little bit. and um, Or just rat snake. Let's just call it a rat snake. Uh, adults are jet black all over, shiny jet black. They can reach lengths over six feet. So this is a fairly large snake. They're extremely arboreal. They love to climb. Um, you'll see them in trees and shrubs. Around your homes, you may see them on the side of the house. You may see them up in the rafters of your outbuildings. Um, they're, they're very excellent climbers and feeding on birds. They will um, often climb to look for bird nests, squirrel nests, other kinds of prey items that are above the ground. But again, uh, shiny, uh, black, generally speaking, uh, long and slender, white chin here. Um, that's, the, that's the rat snake. Sometimes you see uh, rat snakes that have a little faint bit of juvenile pattern. You see some lighter uh, markings in here. That's the uh, rem remnants of the juvenile pattern. So sometimes they're not just black. Sometimes there's some other colors mixed in. And here's a juvenile, a uh, very commonly encountered uh, snake. Um, just this morning, I got a photograph of one that had been beaten to death because the owner didn't know what it was. So, uh, which is what spurred me to make this little video. Um, this is a juvenile uh, rat snake. Uh, things to notice are notice that down the middle of the back, you see rounded or rectangular spots. We refer to these as saddles. These saddles run right down the middle of the back. There's some other spots down the side, but notice they don't cross over. They don't go from like, look at this one right here. They don't go all the way down to the side. They sit right on the top like a saddle. So a row of small saddles down the back uh, and notice that this is the typical coloration light gray as a ground color with darker grayish in this case slightly brownish but oftentimes just a darker gray uh, row of saddles down the back and these little guys are um, abundant they're out in the early spring um, and they also like to climb so you'll see them up in up off the ground and, and and whatnot as well as down on the ground so this is a juvenile rat snake, totally harmless um, uh, constrictor species. Number three in our common list is uh, the eastern garter snake, or just let's call it the garter snake. Um, this is a very vividly colored specimen. Notice a couple of things. Notice the 
checkerboard like pattern down the side which is very common of the local garter snakes and the other thing is to notice that right down the middle of the back we have a light colored stripe no other species of snake in the area that you're going to see in botany woods is going to have a light colored stripe down the middle of the back um, the head is often darker you have these uh, uh, darker patches on the neck region right behind the head that's very typical but uh, light stripe down the back um, checkerboard or row of spots on the side that's a garter snake garter snakes are also water snake relatives they are harmless they will bite if you pick them up but they um, definitely don't um, don't present any problems uh, they eat primarily small soft-bodied prey caterpillars um, earthworms um, things of that nature um, and, and certainly are not uh, are, they're good neighbors you don't need to worry if you have garter snakes in your yard here's a more typically or a little bit more, less vividly colored specimen uh, again you can see that light colored stripe in this case is sort of a tan color right down the middle of the back you can often also detect a lighter stripe down the side although sometimes that gets blurred with spots and whatnot so stripe down the back garter snake nothing to worry about if you are right along the river and a lot of us in this neighborhood are right near the river you may see this this is a northern water snake and we'll just refer to this as the water snake and this species is um, uh, often misidentified uh, but it is a harmless water snake it, it will bite if you pick it up but other than that it's not going to bother you uh, they eat fish and frogs and things like that, that they find and they're very rarely found uh, very far from the actual water all right right in along the edges of the river in shrubbery or around rocks right along the edge of the river um, you may see them swimming in the river you may see them hunting in the river underwater um, identification of this is uh, a couple of there's really three things to notice number one is you see a lot of darker cross bands on a light ground color and 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 key in on the number there's a tremendous number of cross bands it's very you would have to work hard to count all those cross bands a very large number of cross bands secondly the cross bands aren't complete they are here. Notice right on this region, right in the neck region, the cross bands start at the back and they go down to the belly. So they are a complete band around the body. But the thing to really notice is they're wide at the top and they get narrower at the bottom. So there's sort of a diamond shape in this direction. But they're wider at the back, narrower down near the side of the, near the edge of the belly. But as we go back, right here and then from then on down the length of the body notice the cross bands aren't complete again we have a saddle and then very obvious row of spots below that so saddle and spot saddle and spot saddle and spot if you see that kind of alternating saddle and spot pattern down the back it's definitely not a venomous species that's probably a water snake so here we have um, a number of features that help us to pick out that this is a northern water snake. Um, saddle and spot alternating down the sides. Uh, cross bands near the neck that are complete but are wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. So northern water snake plus the habitat. They're going to be right in the right along the stream margin very few feet away from the stream. Never see them wandering very far up into the forest. Um, away from the stream so only the lots that are really backing right up onto the river are likely to see northern water snakes here's another picture of one a little bit brighter colored the coloration is quite variable here sometimes it's very reddish like this individual sometimes it's more brown uh, and also if they're about to shed everything looks a little bit more dull and if they've just recently shed their outer uh, keratin covering they're a lot brighter but this one you can still see those key features right along the neck we see cross bands that are wide at the top and narrow as they go down there's a really good one right here and then further down saddle spot saddle spot saddle spot and a large number of, of these markings all the way down the length of the body so that's water snake so that's four non-venomous species and of course what everybody wants to know is, is this a copperhead? That's the 99% of the questions that people send to me. Is this a copperhead? Well, 
the four species I just showed you, I was emphasizing those features that help you separate them from the copperhead and identify them, but let's look at a copperhead. So here's a copperhead. Yes, we do have them in the neighborhood. They are quite rare. Um, I've lived here at this point. This is spring of 2020, and I've lived here for 26 years. I think I've seen one, if I remember correctly, in the neighborhood in that time, and you know I'm looking. Um, so copperheads are quite rare here. Um, but um, key features that you need to look at um, are these. A, a relatively small number of dark markings on a light background. So dark marking, light background, and a relatively small number. Okay, You could easily count those. One, two, three, four, five, six. You could easily count those on this animal. Wide spaces between these dark markings. Secondly, notice that the darker markings are narrow at the back and come down and are wide near the belly. If you were looking straight down on this animal, that would look like an hourglass, a dark hourglass in a light background. Copperheads typically have a lighter colored head, thus the common name, a lighter colored head, which indeed is a coppery reddish brown color oftentimes. Those are the things to look for. Um, the shape of the dark cross bands, the fact that there's a few dark cross bands, and the lighter colored head, uh, those are all ways to key in that this is a copperhead. And this slide is one that I found online that really sort of points out those items. And this is a fairly typical specimen in that it's about it's uh, dull, it looks like it needs to shed, so we don't have a whole lot of vivid coloration going on. Um, but it points out narrow near the backbone, near the backbone, wide on the sides, and again, that's the dark cross band that's an hourglass shape. And then I added in the head is typically uh, distinctly different and distinctly lighter in color than the rest of the body. And so those would give you a really quick and easy way to identify the copperhead. Juvenile copperheads have the same basic pattern. You've got the hourglasses and uh, on a lighter background. And also notice something I haven't mentioned is there, there are oftentimes these random spots in the light colored background, um, which gives it a, a, a little bit more of a disruptive pattern. Um, but those aren't always there. And we got, a, we got this distinctly differently colored head, but in the juveniles, notice the tail tip. The tail tip is a lemon yellow or a lime green, very vividly colored. These little guys um, hide in the leaves, stick their tail up and wiggle it around in, in the uh, attempt to lure a lizard or a frog into investigating it, thinking it must be a worm or a caterpillar, and then they grab the lizard or frog. So they, they, uh, they lure prey into range using the tip of their tail. Um, they'll hold on to that coloration on the tail tip for about two years. Uh, usually by the end of their second year, it's pretty much gone. And they shift over to feeding primarily on mice, um, small mammals. Uh, but as juveniles, lizards and frogs are their number one prey items. Here's a side-by-side -side contrast of two of the photographs. Again, large number of bands. Cross bands are not hourglass shaped. And then cross bands break out into saddle spot, saddle spot down the back. That's the water snake. Small number of cross bands, very distinctly hourglass shaped, distinctly colored head. Um, small number of bands that could easily be counted as a copperhead. So nice side by side comparison there. Um, honestly, if you don't feel confident in identifying all these non-venomous species, that's okay. All you have to do is know how to identify a copperhead. And that way you can separate every animal that you see in your yard that doesn't have any legs into two piles. Is it a copperhead or is it not? If you can just do that, and this is not rocket science, if you can identify this animal and then separate it from all these others and say, well, that's not a copperhead because it doesn't have these features, then you are way ahead of the game and hopefully a lot more confident and a lot less timid about being in your yard and, 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 and afraid of animals that you're seeing there. And so here's a comparison of several species we've gone over here. Let's see if you, let's see if you can recognize these. Here, light stripe down the middle of the back, that means it's a, correct, a, a garter snake, eastern garter snake. What about this one? 
spots down the side, darker head, very small, right, decays brown snake. This one here, large number of darker bands, um, breaking out into saddles and spots, saddles and spots, down the back. Near the neck, we have cross bands, but they're wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. That is a, exactly, that's a northern water snake. And then here, poking out from under someone's deck, just a little bit of body, but that's all you need to see. I see very distinct dark hourglasses on a light background. That's a northern copperhead. I hope this helped. And um, again, in the, um, um, in the uh, message I put out on Nextdoor, uh, you can find my, find my phone number. I'm not going to put it on this. Um, but um, if you have questions or want to send me a photograph, uh, feel free to contact me. I'm in the directory, in the Botany Woods directory. My name is Bill Sanderson, and I'm happy to answer snake questions. Hopefully, uh, we'll have some face-to-face -face, uh, snake, uh, snake identification workshops again. We at Botany Woods Homeowners Association uh, sponsored one this past year, um, and hopefully we can do that again in the future. So thanks very much and um, have a, a great time in your yard and uh, enjoy the fact that we live in such a great biologically diverse and, and um, rich uh, neighborhood. So thanks very much and see you around the neighborhood.